The Cleveland Opera opens its season tonight with a world premiere of an opera by Stuart Copeland, formerly the drummer for the police. <laughs> It's called Holy Blood and Crescent Moon, a story about Christian and Muslim conflict set in the Holy Land during the Crusades. The opera uses a 52-piece orchestra and 130 people on stage. That's a far cry from a three-piece rock band, especially for someone who until recently was completely unfamiliar with opera. My parents had never brought me up on opera. Uh, I, I, <clears throat> I didn't really seriously consider it as music. I thought it was one of those things that uh, I saw. I felt the same way that people feel about expressionist painting or something. That it, it, come on, you're kidding if you say you like that stuff. You know. Well, it turned out they weren't kidding, and now I love this stuff, and people look at me and think I'm kidding when I say I love it. As you've been working with the Cleveland Opera people, what has the response been? Because there have to be folks there who say. This guy is a rock and roll drummer. He's written an opera. He probably isn't even sure what key it's in. Most of it's in F sharp. A lot of it's in G. A lot of it's in uh, a lot of different keys. It, I don't stick to one key. It's two hours long in one key. Wagner could do it, but I, I'm just a humble rock and roller. This humble rock and roller's operatic hero is Wagner. He says the powerful, and in his words, hairy-chested music sounds great to someone used to loud rock and roll. Copeland has but one year of formal music training, yet he has written the movie scores for Rumblefish, Wall Street, and other films, as well as the score for the TV series The Equalizer. He is a busy man. There are a lot of things to play with here. Uh, lots of music. In fact, music takes precedence over the director, even, over the plot, over everything. Music is the paramount locomotive force. Um, which actually makes opera a very inviting medium for any kind of musician. In the middle of composing an opera, Stuart Copeland has found time to start a new band, Animal Logic, with bassist Stanley Clark and singer-songwriter Deborah Holland. What do you want to do with a band? Uh, play drums. Uh, be the drummer in a band and bang drums. For me, it's a physical exercise. It's the libido coming to the forefront. It's, it's like a good stiff game of tennis uh, with a kind of a sexual element as well. I mean, playing drums is a physical power rush um, that, well, playing any instrument is, um, that uh, any intellectual pursuit cannot duplicate. Back in Cleveland, this week will determine whether this rocker can cross over to opera. Copeland can only hope the final product compares to the process of putting it all together. This prince the king of Jerusalem. The atmosphere is astounding. Um, they're really, really, really into it. Um, the first day that I had with the chorus, the 70 piece chorus, all when they come in, it's like the Tower of Power brass section, only like huger. Uh, I had a sore throat that evening from the lump that was in it all day. I'd never imagined that my humble little tunes could sound so powerful brought out by all those people. Naturally, Copeland is nervous about the premiere, so to keep a handle on his jitters, he's going to appear in one of the fight scenes. And one of the big mad fight scenes, he's going to be on stage and in the middle of it, so he won't be uh, too nervous about it. What happened to the police? <sighs> well, everyone has obviously gone uh, their separate ways. I mean, Sting is going to open in Three Penny Opera here on Broadway in just, uh, just a couple of weeks. The other member of the police ha really hasn't done a bunch since uh, they broke up. Stewart, I think, is of a mind that he wouldn't mind one day to, to be able to all get back together again. But everyone's sort of gone their, their separate ways. This guy studied music formally for like an hour, maybe a little more than that, a year or so. And they said, you just don't have the background to really be involved in all of this music stuff. He goes on, has this great rock career. Technology has helped him write these movie scores. With a computer, he can sit down with a, a keyboard and the computer can literally write the score, change the key, do all that other stuff. And he has an assistant who he calls his Juilliard guy 
who helps him sort of broaden things out and voice different kinds of things like that. And so technology has helped take this natural, creative, maybe even genius talent, and without all of the zillions of hours of, of studying theory and all of that stuff, he's off and writing an opera. Oh, in the old days, people used to complain if you could play by ear. That's you right. Couldn't read music. Yeah. And uh, the, one of the other things that he told me that was really interesting, he said, how do you do this? How do you be a rock drummer? How do you write film scores? How do you write an opera and all this other stuff at the same time? He does stress management. He uses self-hypnosis. And he uses it a couple of times a day. He'll go into his self-hypnotic state and come out and be fresh as a daisy and be able to work for another six hours. Who'd have thought that we'd be learning from the police? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, later on this morning, uh, we're going to bring you that uh, debate going on in Tallahassee over abortion, so stay with us.